Vince McMahon is stepping down as CEO of WWE, but uh, don't get too excited. It's this week in regret. Hello and welcome to everyone. New this morning, WWE has announced that Vince McMahon will be temporarily stepping down as CEO and chairman of the company. This comes as the WWE Board of Directors is investigating whether or not McMahon paid a former female employee millions of dollars to keep quiet about an alleged affair between them. The story of the investigation first broke courtesy of the Wall Street Journal on Wednesday. The allegations also implicate Executive Vice President of Talent Relations John Laurinaitis. The investigations report led to the discovery of several non-disclosure agreements and possible payouts between McMahon and other former female employees. Stephanie McMahon, who recently went on hiatus to spend time with her family, will be the interim CEO and chairman in place of her father while the probe is ongoing. The statement mentions that Vince will still be in charge of creative during this time, and as of this recording, WWE has announced that Mr. McMahon will address the SmackDown crowd later tonight, and it's widely speculated it will be in character. So, a lot to address here, a lot to unpack, and Lord knows a lot of these details will be changing and updating well after this video drops. First of all, the thing that really strikes me as interesting is that WWE, based on that initial report from the Wall Street Journal, they're admitting the affair did happen between Vince and the former employee. And whether or not it was consensual, as they say it was in that statement, it's still, they're admitting a huge abuse of power took place, and that's just the first part of this whole story. Second, the statement on Friday about Vince made no mention of John Laurinaitis and what might happen to his position in the company, which to me is kind of concerning. Well, either he's going to be the first one to go down on all this, or he's just going to stay there. Third, weren't there rumors that Stephanie was taking time off because she wasn't doing a good enough job in fulfilling her duties like she was supposed to, and now, less than a month after she takes time off, she's back as the interim CEO and chairman? Well, which one is it? Fourth, even though officially Vince is stepping back as CEO and chairman, he's still going to be in charge of creative. So, what exactly is going to change? Certainly not the creative end of things, and what exactly is going to stop him from telling Stephanie to do things because he wants them done, and she has that power. So it just feels like him stepping back from those other two positions is meaningless theater. But I will say, if Stephanie is theoretically in charge during this time, from what I've read, it seems that she's very well liked by most of the talent backstage. So it seems like in the short term, at least, this will be some kind of boost in morale, I would assume. Fifth, what in God's name is Vince doing going out there and promoting an appearance tonight on SmackDown where he's allegedly going to be in character? And according to the reports, he will discuss his future absence. Has nobody told him that's a terrible idea on all fronts. Not everything in real life has to be turned into a storyline. Can you imagine if he did this during the steroid trial? I can't say I'm surprised by any of these allegations. I mean, stories of Vince interacting with female employees goes back a long ways. This feels like the most damning story of its kind since the Rita Chatterton days. I wouldn't be surprised if more stories kind of come out from this, kind of like slow leaks and the dam ultimately breaking. I mean, it's already an abuse of power. They've already admitted to the affair, but if money is involved, then it's a flagrant abuse of power, and this really needs to be addressed. It's a story that the more you think about it, your mind just goes to the fact that this culture within WWE needs to change, but based on what we're seeing from the company so far, it just feels like business as usual. Every time there's a new wrinkle in this story, it immediately comes with some kind of caveat that makes you go, oh, nothing's going to come from this. And they're probably going to make a victory lap out of it at some point, if not tonight. And we're not even talking about the fans out there who no doubt think this entire story is a work, especially now that they're announcing that Vincent Mann is going to be on television, which makes following the story even more exhausting. All I can think is, will something finally be done? Will something finally come from this that will lead to some positive change in the culture in the company? I guess we'll find out tonight on SmackDown, won't we? Man, they sure know how to hook us. In other WWE news, you can add one more to the list of injured wrestlers in that company as one of WWE's longest tenured stars could be out for the rest of 2022. Fight is reporting that Randy Orton had been working through a back injury for some time leading up to that tag title unification match with the Usos on May 20th, but now the situation is so bad that he might require surgery, which would likely put him on the shelf for the rest of the year. Orton was apparently slated to play a huge role in creative plans this summer, but now those plans appear to be on hold. It's definitely rough news for Orton and his fans. I personally think he was doing some of his best character work in a long time this past year, uh, teaming up with Riddle and doing the RK Bro stuff. 
He's always so smooth and reliable and consistent in ring. To me, he's one of those guys that, you know, in case of emergency, you could kind of slot him in any position and he would do well there, main event or otherwise. Him being out sucks, and it's just one more blow to WWE who have already been dealing with injuries, you know, losing major players left and right for a variety of reasons. Now, I don't doubt the company's ability in times of extreme duress to make new interesting stars when they absolutely have to, and I think they have some, some time this summer to do that. But if they don't do that, when you combine the wrestler injuries and Roman Reigns' reduced schedule as the you know, dual champion and everything, this could shape up to be a very long, arduous season of summer programming if they don't make those changes. That being said, it's not as if there aren't people they could move up in a relatively short amount of time and get them over as major players. Guys like Seth Rollins, Bobby Lashley, Riddle, Drew McIntyre, AJ Styles. There are some of the names that come up off the top of my head when it comes to future people who could challenge Roman Reigns and make sense in that spot. Who else do you think could be up there? Let me know in the comments section. In 2020, the wrestling world was stunned by the suicide of 22-year-old stardom wrestler Hana Kimura, but now her death has led to a change of the law in Japan. On Monday, Japan's parliament passed legislation to strengthen their online harassment laws. The amendment, which takes effect later this summer, says that those found guilty of harassment not based on facts or specific actions can be jailed for up to one year or fined 300,000 yen, about 2,200 American dollars. That's a big from the old punishment, which was fewer than 30 days in prison and a fine up to 10,000 yen. The legislation was kickstarted in the aftermath of Kimura's death. She committed suicide back in May of 2020 after enduring harassment from fans of the reality TV show she was part of. The bill will be re-examined in three years to gauge its impact on freedom of expression. Well, in my opinion, I think it's a very bittersweet piece of news about this law being passed. Obviously, it's terrible that it took someone taking their own life for something like this to change. But if the new amendment can prevent just one person from going down the same path that Hana Kimura did, then I think it will be worth it. And call me crazy, but maybe we should start levying fines against online trolls and harassers and abusers in the online sphere here in America, perhaps. What do you think? The tragedy of the Von Erich family will be getting the Hollywood treatment soon, and a major star has already signed on to the project. It was first reported on Deadline this week that Zac Efron is set to star at A24's The Iron Claw, a drama that will follow the rise and fall of the Texas wrestling dynasty and their impact on the sport from the 1960s to the present day. The film will be written and directed by Sean Durkin, a Canadian filmmaker known for such movies as Martha Marcy May Marlene and The Nest. Well, I can definitely see Efren playing Carrie Von Erich. He's got the muscle definition down pat, or maybe even David Von Erich. Honestly, though, I'm not sure I want to see a movie about how fucked up this family got by the end. I mean, there's a reason I stopped watching The Wrestler after the first act, but I'm not saying the movie will be bad. I'm sure aesthetically and thematically it could still be very good, and so there is a part of me that's very curious about seeing this film. Definitely if they can work this moment into the story. Jerry Lawler, welcome to Dallas. A pair of WWE stars are going to be making some dough and hopefully selling it as well. Sonya Deville revealed in a recent interview with Forbes that she and longtime friend Mandy Rose plan to open their own donut shop in Los Angeles called Demandy's Donuts. The two got the idea after the success of their YouTube series where they would eat and rate donuts in the various cities they traveled to. Deville says the donuts will be available by delivery service, quote, within the next few months. For more information, you can visit their website at demandies.com. Impact Wrestling's Slammiversary pay-per-view goes down this Sunday night in Nashville, and one member of the roster says he's calling it a career after this weekend. Longtime referee Brian Hebner announced on his podcast this week he'll be retiring from full-time officiating after Slammiversary and the following Impact TV tapings next week, saying he wants to spend more time with his family and focus on other projects. Hebner, the son of Hall of Fame official Earl Hebner, has officiated in wrestling for 23 years across several companies including WWE, Impact, NWA, and Ring of Honor. Congratulations on a great career, Brian, and enjoy your retirement. And speaking of impact, time now for my favorite thing in wrestling this week. Now, if you're following the product, you know that there's a group of Impact Originals fighting off a hostile takeover attempt from the group called Honor No More. But you can't talk about Impact Originals without talking about Aces and Eights and this man. Oh, 
check out this fiery moment from friend of the show, D'Lo Brown. This took place on this week's Impact after a tag match pitting Kenny King and Vincent against Wes Briscoe and Garrett Bischoff. D'Lo was confronted and took matters into his own hands. Check out the height of that sky high on King. This little blast in the past was my favorite thing in wrestling this week. That's going to do it for this week in Regret, folks. If you're wondering why I didn't talk about the Jeff Hardy situation in this video, I already addressed it in my Dynamite review a couple of days ago, so check that out if you want to hear my thoughts on the Jeff Hardy DUI arrest and subsequent suspension from AEW. But let me know what you think about the other big stories I talked about this week in the comments section below. I'm Brian Zane, and I'll see you next time.